Well, Christopher, this is the lobby of our 1956 building. Um, it was built specifically for Lachlan Children's Center, but the organization itself stretches back to 1897. Um, Marian Alexander, the organization's founders, um, built a um, uh, 25 bedroom mansion in the hills up above Swickley, expressly to bring out mothers and newborn infants from the pollution of downtown Pittsburgh um, in the late 1800s, which I think you know, was a pretty radical idea then, um, one of the first places like that in, in the country. And over the years, sort of society caught up with Mrs. Lachlan's idea, and by the time she died and left a sizable chunk of money to the organization, there were really better places for those kids and parents to be. Um, but at the same time, there was a group down here in Swickley called the Child Counseling Center, and they had lots of clients and no money, whereas the Fresh Air Home had lots of money and no clients. So they petitioned the courts and merged the two, and that's what Lachlan Children's Center was born from. And that sort of explains why we have this array of services that at first blush looks kind of weird together. Academics, speech language um, therapy, and counseling services. Um, the psychology services often obviously came from the child counseling part, um, and the academic and speech grew out of the fresh air home. So um, right now we offer uh, diagnostic services. So children can come here and be evaluated um, with academic uh, measures or uh, psychological measures. Um, they can come here for evaluations for their communication skills, speech hearing, and get speech therapy with us. Um, they ha we have one-on-one -on -one tutoring, we have small group tutoring, child and family counseling, and then we also have a, a um, nationally uh, accredited preschool out in our little carriage house that we can take a look at in just a bit. Um, but right now I thought I would just walk you guys around the main building. We renovated, um, it was the renovation lasted 21 months. We started in December of 2010 and just wrapped up. Um, so we're really pretty excited about it. The, the center, as I said, was built in 56, was renovated in the 80s, and that was really the last time. It had been well cared for, but um, you know we see anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 kids every year, each with two hands, touching and grabbing and pulling. So it was really, it was a lot of love and care. Um, but we, we really needed to, to renovate. So um, we worked with Gretchen Barlett from Barlett Design and um, Craig Connolly from Synergy. We were really blessed with both of them. They both understood, you know, it's a place for kids. It needed to be bright and cheerful and that sort of thing. So we'll start out with the waiting room. So the architect um, took a look at all three of our buildings and um, really sort of re-envisioned how we could do business and that included um, grouping our services together in a way that they hadn't been before. So from this doorway on used to be um, one big classroom that was used as our preschool. Um, now this room is our family waiting room and beyond it here are four speech therapy offices. Um, I, I thought I should just point out, the, the architect Gretchen Barlett did a really terrific job of stretching our dollars as far as they could go. Um, and one example of that are these great panels. They're up here um, to absorb a little bit of sound, but also to act as artwork. Um, and we created them from $6 a yard fabric from Ikea. So just, you know, she was a master at, at finding ways that we could stretch our budget so that we could really get the, the biggest bang for our buck. We renovated all three buildings on our campus um, grounds, including a brand new preschool, for um, $750,000. Oh. Um, one of our speech therapy rooms. The cool thing about these is that they each have an observation room attached to them. That's something that we've never had before. But the observation rooms give parents or other uh, professionals an opportunity to watch what's going on in the therapy session itself so that they can use those strategies at home. Um, we're really excited about having those. Okay. Okay. Which is also great for the speech pathologists because a lot of times they need children to watch themselves you know, articulate different sounds. So the mirrors work um, well for both in here and as observation windows. Okay. Well, the whole renovation was really like a chess game. Um, they 
we moved our tutors out of our little carriage house um, right before Christmas of 2010. And because that space was in vacant, the, the crew could work over there without impacting the rest of us. They turned that space into our preschool. So once that was ready, the preschool kids could move over there. So we had the preschool space to work on. And once it was done, speech moved in. And, and so that was sort of the puzzle that how do we stay in business, keep seeing kids in a safe environment, but still renovate. Um, but it is, it's, it's interesting now a year later to walk back here and think, oh yeah, this was the preschool because it just it doesn't feel anything like that original space. a lot noisier back then. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and actually we kind of miss having 16 kids coming and going every day out through the lobby. Um, that's been the one thing that's, that's been interesting about the renovation is how the staff now tends, tends to stay in their little service area rather than milling around um, as we did before. But I think once the newness of the offices wear off, people will be um, less likely to you know, be spending all their time in their brand new space. Mr. Lachlan, the grandson of Marianne Alexander Lachlan, was the chairman of the National Gallery of Art for quite a few years, so has a great eye. In 1957, he commissioned this sculpture out in the courtyard. Um, it's called The Flying Lesson and was done um, by an American woman who was actually born in, in Pittsburgh but spent most of her adult life in Paris. Um, so it's a parent sort of launching a child off into the child's future. There's this funny story in one of the volumes of our history books about one of the board members coming in and seeing that statue out in the courtyard laying on its side waiting to be installed. And she looked at the receptionist and said, what's that scrap metal doing out there? Um, in the meantime, it's probably worth more than, you know, the contents of all three of our buildings at this point, but... Um, these are all academic offices. So we see kids, um, preschool all the way up to high school, and provide one-on-one -on -one, um, academic instruction for them. Um, we also do things like SAT prep, study skills, organizational skills, um, college essay writing. We do some small groups um, around math and, and language arts, um, and that all happens in, in these offices. Um, I also mentioned we do a lot of evaluation work as well. Um, we pride ourselves on something called a comprehensive evaluation that looks at a kid both academically and psychologically um, so that you can determine two things, where your child's functioning but also what he's capable or she's capable of doing. So you really get both pieces of the, of the picture. If you do just a standard achievement test, okay, you know where he or she's sort of um, um, at, but you don't get the, the flip side of that. What, are, what, what is she capable of? So, um, so a lot like the speech offices, um, one of the bad things before we renovated, um, the spaces were all really individualized. Um, we wanted to, to make them um, as flexible as possible, uh, not only for now, but for in 10 years when you know our service needs change. Um, we didn't want a bunch of spaces that were specifically for one particular service and couldn't be used for anything else. So we went with the same furniture the whole way throughout and that sort of thing. There's a local woman here in Swickley, um, her name is Jessica Breedlove, and she takes her kids' artwork and sort of reimagines it. And we thought that that would be a great thing to show the kids that come to see us that you know their work is important and look what it can turn into. So this is actually an image of the child's original artwork and a little story about the child and then how Jessica took that artwork and sort of pumped it up. Um, so we were, we were lucky to have her. Um, I love this one because the little girl's quote, she has twirly shoes because she's extra fancy. So we're leaving our 1956 building and we're headed over to um, our cottage, which was built in the 1800s. In the 80s, uh, they built this long connecting hallway. And what's nice about it is it's hidden from the street. So when you're walking down the street, you don't have this 1800s building, you know, sort of slapped up against this 1956 mid-century brick building. Um, but we use it as a gallery. One of our board members took 
um, clippings and other ephemera from each of the six decades that we've been around and made these history boards, one for each decade. And I love pointing out that this was Elizabeth Lesquin, who was the very first executive director. This represents the 1950s. So you come down two decades, and here she is again when they announced her retirement from the center. And you come down 20 more years, and here she is at 1987, or at age 87. I think that that sort of longevity is is really something cool about the center. Um, we've had board members and staff members who have been involved for decades. Mr. Lachlan, um, who is the grandson of Marion Alexander, um, has been a trustee since 1956 when the center opened. He's still active. He manages our investment account. His two sons are also trustees. And they come in from New York two or three times a year for meetings. So it, it has a nice sense of history. And I think that the clients can sort of feel that, you know, that there's a longevity about the place. The cottage houses all of our administrative offices. So my office is there, the office manager, our intake coordinator, and then we have two um, uh, meeting spaces that we use. One of which is right behind us, or right in front of us. At, this is our library. Um, we use it if we're going to do a parent conference or something like that, have more people than would um, fit in one of the regular offices. Uh, this building started out as a house. Um, we're not sure exactly what all of the rooms um, were used for, but it threw the architect and contractor a few curveballs when they started breaking down walls and didn't find what they expected to find. Um, and over in our boardroom, which is a brand new space, um, so this is the boardroom. Um, we use it for community meetings. Uh, the staff meets in here. Previously, the staff met in the family waiting room, which was not the greatest thing because um, for a lot of kids, a break in their normal routine, not being able to go sit in the waiting room like they normally do, really sort of threw them off and, and um, their therapy suffered because of it. So now they have a dedicated space over in the main building and we have a dedicated space for meetings over here. This used to be two offices and when they tore the wall down between the two, they realized that um, one of the offices was actually a porch they had to go through an exterior wall, which really surprised us because the, the front of the cottage looked so like it you know, was designed to be like that. And there were a number of other sort of surprises for them, but they, uh, they persevered and I think it's a great space. And then you can go back and check out my office and then over to the preschool. So this used to house um, two different employees and the architect, said, you know, this in the renovation plan, this is going to be your office. And up until that point, I had this tiny little office that I just loved because it was right off the hallway and people would actually stop and talk to me as, as they were passing. Um, and I was afraid that if I took the big office, people would sort of stand out in the hall and say, well, are you busy? Can we come in? But luckily it hasn't turned out like that. They still come in and harass me, which is a good thing. Um, we think this was originally the dining room when it was a house. Um, and up until the 80s, there was a family, or there were a series of families that, that rented it and, and lived here. Um, and then uh, when that last lease was up, uh, they built the connecting hallway and took it over for, for um, administrative space because we were so cramped up in the main building. The final building we're going to take a look at is the carriage house, and it was literally a carriage house for this building. Um, you opened the double doors and you drove your horse and buggy in, and um, the horse lived out there. And um, it, it also had some fun surprises for us when we started tearing down walls. So we we'll go take a look. So now we're in the carriage house, and um, when we first started renovating, well, up until uh, December of 2010, there were five different uh, tutoring offices in here. But before that, it, it housed carriages and horses. And when I was out here with the architect one day, the, we were talking about the windows because they all started up about four feet up off the ground, which was fine when it was adults and older kids out here. But, you know, preschool kids, they would have been jumping up trying to look out the window. I said, I've always thought that it was really an odd thing. And the architect said, well, it was so the horses couldn't kick the glass out. Which I thought was such a cool, um, but 
anyway, they took all the walls down um, and built this wonderful space. I was saying earlier about Gretchen really knowing how to stretch a dollar. The light fixtures are obviously what everybody talks about when they come in the space. Again, Ikea, um, you know, 60 bucks or something like that, but they make such an impact that, um, and the, the leaves are Ikea as well. Um, so, you know, who wouldn't want to either be a kid and come here or send their kids here? Um, if we go up the stairs, we can check out, uh, there's a reading loft up there. Even though you're three, you still have good days and bad days, just like adults. And, you know, if you're having a day where you really don't want to be around 15 other three, four, or five-year-olds, you can come up here and hang out, which I think was really a smart, a smart use of the space. Originally, this was the outside wall of the building, and it had an open porch. Um, but we needed a place where the parents could hang out waiting for the kids to be done or dropping them off, that sort of thing. Um, so the architect uh, did some infill and some brand new windows and that sort of thing. So now parents can wait out here. But what they uncovered, which I think is very cool, is one of the original horseshoes hanging up above the door from back when it was a carriage house. And the um, construction workers came over and said, hey, we found this and we're not touching it. We don't want any bad luck. So we left it hanging up there, which I think is kind of cool. So yeah, this was the outside. And it's funny, we had to strip the paint of the cottage and the carriage house back to bare wood because it was lead paint. So we had to go through lead paint abatement and all of that. Um, and I thought for sure from 1800 until 2012 that there would be some really cool colors under there. Both buildings had been white their entire lives. So we never really saw the horseshoe up there because the wall was white, the horseshoe was white, and there were, you know, 150 years worth of paint on it. But I'm glad that we uncovered it. I think that's pretty cool. The other cool thing out here is the bench. Again, Gretchen stretching our dollars. She took a kitchen counter and had the contractor route it um, and then built the frame. So um, we have our own little custom bench for, you know, a couple hundred bucks.